and welcome back. In today's video, I am going to be doing some very, very large uh, cactus cuttings. I get often asked, um, how do you do large cactus cuttings? The process for the small ones and the big ones is not too different. The main difference is time. I'll show you the monster cuttings that I'm going to be doing today and the uh, process that I'll follow. We are in the middle of winter, hence the beanie, uh, because it is freezing. Uh, but anyways, it's uh, I picked up a good deal on these guys and so I thought, well, why not? and I'll uh, show you what we're gonna do with them. Alrighty, so I've got the little guy <laughs> little guy set up here, uh, and for a cactus of this size, it's going to have a crazy woody stalk, so a normal kitchen knife will not work, um, or you'll be sawing through it, um, you know, for, <laughs> for a long time. So I've just sprayed down the, uh, the saw with some alcohol, and now, and I'm just going to go straight through here. Lovely. Okay, so they've all been uh, recut, nice uh, flat cuts, which is what I like to use. Uh, you'll notice there is a little bit of brown marking uh, on the uh, cut surface. That is just the rust rubbing off from the uh, saw. Uh, nothing to worry about, it's not going to cause any problems. So from here, I've got them all laid out like this, and then just here I have a little tub with some garden lime in it. I will take each of these and dip them into the uh, garden lime till they've got a nice good coating uh, on the cut surface. Uh, and I know I'm gonna be asked, can you use sulfur powder? Yes, absolutely you can. It's not what I use, I use garden lime, um, but I do have sulfur on hand, but I don't use it for cuttings. Uh, I just use garden lime. So it's uh, not gonna make too much of a difference which one you use, uh, I just personally prefer garden lime. So I'll give these guys a little dip and then I will show you what they look like after that. Alrighty, so with the surfaces cut and dusted heavily uh, with lime, I now leave these guys uh, as upright as possible and on an upturned uh, plant tray. Uh, you can use anything, you know, this sort of setup um, that will provide airflow around the base. And I'll uh, look at sort of shifting them around just lightly, just maybe I'll move this one a little bit over that way, uh, just so there's no dead spots. In terms of how long, I will actually leave these guys to dry for a minimum, absolute minimum of eight weeks. Larger cuttings need an obscenely long amount of time to callus and uh, heal over properly. So um, the longer the better. If they do start throwing roots, which they can do, then obviously I'll pot them up a little bit earlier than that. But uh, I would say for, for cuttings of this size, you'd be looking... Uh, at around six to eight weeks as a starting point because they are very very large Again, I'll just move them around every I don't know a couple of days to a week. It's not a huge deal Now uh, we'll flip back up and then I'll just run you through some troubleshooting and just some hints and tips for uh, For what to do from here Alrighty guys, so that is the process that I follow for very large cactus cuttings. Um, as you've seen, big monster ones, I will leave the handles on those guys um, right up until they go into their final pots, uh, just because it's going to be uh, a lot easier than me having to remove them and put them back on and things like that. So the uh, some things to look out for. Number one, be careful. Be very, very careful when you are dealing with uh, cuttings of that size. The spines on those aren't too bad because they are on the shorter side. Um, you know, if you're dealing with something with longer spines, just be incredibly careful because they flip and move and do all sorts of crazy things uh, and you can end up with uh, some pretty bad uh, injuries from cactus uh, spines. Um, trust me, I know, I've been there. <laughs> So uh, just number one, please be very, very careful. If you need to get a helper, get a helper. Uh, I don't recommend wrapping um, 
cacti in cardboard or anything like that because the spines um, and, and then holding them aggressively because the spines can and often go straight through and uh, into your hand before you even know what's happened. Um, I'm more of a fan of using a garden pot with a very like rigid plastic. Pretty much not many cactus spines are going to go through that plastic. Um, so just just be careful. The other thing that you'll probably notice uh, and this happens quite frequently is discoloration around the cut area or surface area. So little black spots are the most common and nine times out of ten they're nothing to worry about so don't go doing anything drastic. Um, you might notice a little bit of brown, a little bit of orange, some speckling, all those kinds of things. It's completely normal. Uh, it is just going to be little bacteria and bugs and whatever else that's thought, hey, this is a, a nice spot to live, so I'm going to park here for a while. What you do want to keep an eye out for is if the uh, tissue uh, on the cut surface starts to go mushy, it shouldn't, provided you are um, providing adequate airflow around the cut surface, like with the upturned tray. You could also use like a strainer, a colander, whatever. There's a hundred things you could use. Um, with good airflow and provided you've treated the base with lime, sulfur or something of that nature, uh, most things won't end up being a big problem. Uh, and then the other uh, tip would be, be patient, be very, very, very patient. Um, there's no harm in leaving the cactus cutting, um, sitting there drying for longer rather than um, shorter. The worst thing that's going to happen is that it's going to throw roots. Uh, I recommend keeping the cuttings in the light levels that they're going to be grown in or as close to as possible. So if you don't have a greenhouse, um, you want to keep them, give them as much light as you can or the similar conditions, um, but keep them covered because you don't want, um, you don't want them stretching, which can happen because cactus, even though they've been cut, will continue to grow. Uh, and that leads on to the next tip is do not lie them down. If you lie a cactus cutting down, it's going to go, hey, I need the light and the tip will bend up Pretty much all of the time that will happen. It's unsightly uh, and it's not very, you can't reverse it. Once it's once it's got that bend in it, that's it. It'll straighten out, but it uh, it's never going to uh, look, look the same. So I have mine as upright as I possibly can. Uh, and then that way they'll um, maintain their, their shape and their form. And uh, from there, I'll... Uh, I'll actually underpot them into very, very small pots uh, at the very end. And this is my last tip that I, I also recommend. Last tip and then we'll sign off for this video. Um, I will then take a pot that is just big enough to fit the cactus cutting inside of. And all I want is around this much gravel in the bottom of the pot, um, put the cactus cutting on top of that, and then about that much again around the uh, the top of it. So realistically, it's only going to be about that much uh, of the cactus that's covered. Maybe a little bit more uh, with these larger ones. And I do that at the end of the drying process, and then leave them in those little pots in an upright position, supported, similar to how we just saw them a minute ago, uh, for a couple of reasons. The first one is that when those little roots are forming, or the first roots are forming, I want to be able to provide water to the cactus. Uh, but I don't want it to be in a big pot, in the size pot that it needs to be in eventually because a pot that large is going to hold too much water and I don't want the cactus sitting, uh, a fresh cactus cutting, uh, sitting in, in uh, moist soil uh, or substrate for that long. So by underpotting it just to a tiny little pot, what it does is it allows the uh, roots to grow out uh, and then you can give it a little bit of water which dries out very fast, the roots soak it up, it gives some strength to the cactus and then what you'll find is that when you go from that m the major underpotting to, a, uh, to the, the pot that it's going to live in, um, you've got a root system that is just literally ready to hit the ground running. Um, so that's why I uh, recommend micropotting as, I would, uh, as I've coined it and then put it in its eventual pot. Uh, the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages. But that's it. That's how I take very large cactus cuttings. I hope you found the video uh, interesting. Just a reminder, you can support my channel on Patreon. The links are in the description. Uh, you can also uh, follow me on Facebook, where I do some posts and uh, polls and things like that as well, just to see what kind of videos uh, you guys are uh, interested in seeing next. Um, but look, thanks for watching, uh, and as always, happy gardening. Bye!